Hi, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm hanging in there. The sun yeah. is shining, and I'm excited to be talking with you. Thank you so much for having me. Where um, are you? Where are you spending quarantine? I've been in Atlanta, Georgia, so that's been an interesting experience. <laughs> and then yeah. I actually just got back from Arlington, Virginia, where I'm from, and I spent about six weeks with my family. So that's been just a gem just to be able to spend a lot of time with my family because normally I'm traveling for work. Right. Or so um, that's one positive that I've had in the, you know, during this time is spending more time with family. So I can't complain. Yeah, I just kind of met your mom. She said hello to me on Twitter. I saw that. I <laughs> no, no, that's amazing. My mom would do something like that. She's so proud of you. Oh, I love, no, my mom is great. I love she's, her. Dearly. She's very she'll, old. She'll always be your number one fan because it always comes down to being about moms. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so let's talk about Little Voice, Sarah Bareilles. You're singing original music by Sarah Bareilles. So first of all, let's tell everyone what the show's about. Give me the log line. So Little Voice is a wonderful show. I'm super excited to be a part of. It is about a young woman in her 20s or early 20s named Bess King, who is discovering her art as a singer-songwriter um, after facing a lot of rejection and feeling like she is unable to pursue and change the, the destiny of her father and his uh, failure or failure um, in his uh, pursuit of his music career. And along the way, she um, deals with a love triangle and, um, and also is finding a way for her brother who is on the spectrum to find his independence and through the experiences and relationships that she has, she finds her little voice and starts pursuing her career with, with courage and um, tenacity. And it's, a, it's, um, and it's loosely based on Sarah Bareilles' experience in the beginning of her career um, when she started and the, you know, her trajectory and how she made it to be who she is today. So uh, yeah. That's a little bit. So let, let's talk about the audition. Do you sing Sarah Borella songs for the audition? Do they tell you to sing Sarah Borella songs? Or do you say, I think I should sing Sarah Borella songs? <laughs> I saw, they were like, it's a show loosely based on Sarah Borella's life. So sing some Sarah Borella songs. I'm like, I know a couple. I, I can do that. I've got a couple in my back pocket. And, um, and I was also given two sides um, to the scenes. It's a scene in the pilot where Bess runs into um, the gentleman that is in the storage unit next to her, and she feels very vulnerable because she's caught singing. And then um, the other one was when Bess goes back on stage for the first time in like a year since she has been booed off the stage and uh, her awkward stage banter. So I instantly identified with it. So I, yeah, it was that was the audition that I that I got. I mean, and this is the kind of role where you know, every, at least most actors, um, musicians, singers, dancers, any artist of any type goes through a lot of rejection. So you're, you know, it's very meta because you're playing someone, you probably went to auditions that your heart was crushed and you're just trying to make, you're just trying to make it. Absolutely. I think it's a very, uh, it, it's a part of the process of being an artist or, or just a human being is the rejection. And the hardest part is, feeling okay after I think. And, uh, you know, I, one thing I think I've, uh, tried to remind myself is sometimes people can't define your worth in five minutes in one moment of time. Like, you, you know, there's, there's so many aspects of you and, and so much time that you've put into your life. And if you bomb one audition in five minutes, you got many other opportunities. I've definitely <laughs> bombed a lot. So, so what, okay, so tell us, what was your worst audition? Tell us, like, your crazy audition story. Oh, my gosh. I've had a, uh, I've had a couple. Um, I think that the, the last one actually was for uh, Jasmine on Broadway. Uh, for a laugh. Okay. That, I would personally say that was a bomb. Uh, it was my first time auditioning for Broadway. The last time I auditioned for Broadway, I auditioned for the 
original Billy Elliot cast as one of the da the, the young dancers. Oh, wow. So that was a long time. <laughs> and so I was shaking. Like, I, and, and the, and the octave was just a little bit too high. It was a little out of my range. And I was just so nervous. I couldn't even breathe. And I was just like, okay, thank you for having me. Like, I'm not making an excuse. I'm not going to waste your time. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> on to the next and I definitely went out there in tears I was like I feel so embarrassed <laughs> so, that was a, but um I think you just gotta you know kick that bucket and and uh yeah. not kick the bucket but like you know, uh, <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> kick the ball down the street and hopefully the next theater audition I have will I'll feel a little more you know <laughs> So, so tell me about the first audition that you did get your the first job. I, I actually don't remember. Um, <laughs> I started, I started, I, I started doing print work and commercials when I was very young. So mm -hmm. I, I actually don't remember auditioning for my first job. Um, but the first, I will say, like when I I moved to LA when I was seventeen, I would say the first like big you know, exciting TV role I got uh, was for Trophy Wife. And I was a really mean teenage girl that was golfing. And I had to say, shut up. And I was, and I, I was super excited when I got there. Well, I didn't expect to get it. And um, it was with uh, Bradley Whitford. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is really exciting. And, uh, and I remember like, everybody from home was like, shut up. Oh my gosh, shut up. And I was like, my grandma even sent me a text, shut up. I was like, <laughs> So that's like so my how, first, yeah. How many times did you just keep saying, shut up, shut up, fearful that when you, when you would have to really say it on film, you would just be like, be quiet. I, I, <laughs> well, uh, but uh, yeah, I think that was the first like big moment where I was, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, I moved to LA and I actually got a job. Like this right. is exciting. So um, yeah. But since then, you've definitely had some jobs, yes. Star, Black Christmas, um, and then, of course, like, you know, we're talking about now is Little Boys, mm -hmm. and it's not just acting, it's also singing. Yes. That's, talk about the, one, one, the pressure just to have to sing on, you know, on episodic television, then also to know that you're singing original songs that Sarah Bareilles wrote. And she's going to be watching them. Like, is that just weird? Do you try to be like Sarah Bareilles? Or do you just interpret it your own way? Um, I, You know, uh, the one thing I will say is Sarah is such an amazing person. I, I think that everybody can feel her essence through her music. Yes. And um, I felt instantly comfortable with her. Um, mm. She felt like a buddy and a mentor. And somebody that was so gracious and, and, and guiding she was kind of a guiding light throughout the whole process. So um, I definitely felt nervous and uh, felt like sometimes the material, um, especially when it came to piano, um, was a little, uh, you know, uh, above my skill level. So that was some, and I, I got cast pretty late in the game. Mm -hmm. So um, the turnaround to make sure that I sang all the songs was very quick. And that's the one thing about television. And the same thing with Star, you know, we had to, we had to record the music quickly and um, efficiently and memorize it and perform it. So it's the same, it was the same just for a little voice. And it was just a, a lot more on, on my plate this time. So, uh, but it was so exciting. And Sarah was so gracious, gave me great advice, really helped me grow as a performer. And, and, uh, you know, you, it could be a completely different experience. Yeah. And she was just so encouraging and she made me feel so empowered and comfortable to play this character and to sing her original music. So let's, I, let's talk about Bess and her brother. Those scenes are like moving and they just make you feel good. And so talk about this relationship. Like you said, um, your brother, uh, Bess's brother is on the spectrum. He lives in a, an apartment with um, other uh, men like him talk about that relationship and talk about what did it what did it say in the script what, what, like when did you know he would be on the spectrum and then start working when um when I got a call back I had um, a conversation with Jesse and Sarah and 
um, they started to give me more backstory about the character. And one of the sides I got was about her experience with her brother and how he's older than her. But I guess when she was younger, she didn't realize that he was on the spectrum. And then as she got older, she saw that um, he got treated differently. And she always had her brother's back against people that were against him just because he was different. Mm -hmm. um, so that's when Sarah and Jesse sent me um, those sides. That's when I had to do a lot of work on creating that relationship. And, mm -hmm. and that was before I got the role and before we even know, knew who was um, going to be playing Bluey. And, um, and I'm really, really excited that they chose Kevin. Kevin Valdez is an incredible actor. He is so, like, he, it, he made it so easy for me to create mm. a brother sister dynamic. He's so charming. He's like such a dedicated actor. He had the most dialogue out of the whole show and he nailed it every freaking time. And mm. I just took off of him watching him portray this character. It was easy for me to feel that sibling relationship. It's really, you, you could feel, you could feel when you're watching it, you really can't. So let's talk about more of the diversity of this show. You're a biracial woman. You're playing a biracial woman. Um, there's LGBTQ storylines, South Asian storylines. I mean, it's New York. How do you do it? You, if you're going to do a show about New York, you got to do that, right? Right. Absolutely. I'm so proud of that. I'm so excited because I think that it's, it, it just is what it is. It, uh, it's a heterogeneous community. And that's how our world is. And for it to be there it, and people just see it and see the storylines and, and see these different people that maybe are different from them, but they can mm -hmm. find some sort of way to identify with these characters. That makes me really excited because, you know, I hope that, you know, somebody who might feel differently about either someone being in the LGBTQ community, somebody being biracial, you know, somebody being on the spectrum, I hope that they... It, I hope that they find a new chapter for themselves mm. and open up their mentality and like, oh, you know, I can actually relate to this person. I need to change myself. So mm. I think the representation is super important. So tell me about the script. Was Bess um, described as biracial? Mm -mm. Wow. No. Um, Sarah and Jesse asked me what my ethnicity was, and I told them that I was biracial, and they followed suit in casting um, at uh, my parents and that was something that was really exciting because growing up um, I was usually cast as Latina women and mm. uh, I wasn't acknowledged as my own ethnicity until star and uh, and that's I think that I you know should be able to play who I am Right. And it's, you know, it is a thing, like people of different races get married. So, <laughs> and have children. so here I am. Uh, <laughs> to, to be truly represented for who I am. I, I'm really grateful for that. And I love the fact that it didn't say on the script, it didn't describe what what best was, what, what her ethnic makeup was, but you yeah. were the perfect best. They found that in you. I, yeah, I feel, I feel super grateful. I'm, I'm really grateful uh, to the, to casting and to Sarah, Sarah and Jesse for that. So when are you going to go on tour? Oh God, I don't, I'm like, ah, I <laughs> never thought about that. Um, <laughs> we'll see, we'll see what doors open once everything's safe again. And, and uh, I'm, I'm open, I'm open to what <laughs> the universe has to offer. So. So if you could have an artist come on the show and perform with you, not including Sarah Bareilles, who would that be? Oh my gosh. I personally. You could I, give three, you could give three if you want, if you don't want to just do one. Okay. <laughs> I never told Sarah this, but I absolutely love Josh Groban. I think he is you and, you and my husband. I know. My I, husband loves him. Yes, I'm in good company. <laughs> yeah, I like, I love Josh Groban. I would love to sing with you him. You haven't told Sarah this yet. No, I haven't. Sarah, Especially if you're out there, Josh Groban, little voice. I would, I would throw up. I'd be like, ah! <laughs> I, I'd be so excited. Um, 
who I mean this is like um I think on a I'm trying to think of a that's a, a tough question, but I personally really love Posure. If I could ever mm -hmm. sing, you know, a, a pop album or like do a duet with someone, I would love to. Mm. And then, you know, I would love to sing with John Legend. If he came on the show, I I would freak <laughs> out if he if he came. I mean, we had his photograph in the bar where Best works. So I'm like, hey, bud, like, want to come on the show? Yeah. Uh, next that. next season, we better see Josh Groban's photo up in the <laughs> bar. <laughs> Josh Groban and singing like a beautiful Christmas melody of some sort. Or <laughs> raise me up and Bess is crying at the bar, like giving someone a shot at tequila. <laughs> Well, Bess, as we see, she has various jobs. She's a bartender. She's a dog walker. What are some of the gigs that you did to get um, by? Uh, when I moved to Los Angeles, the first job I got, I was so excited. I was um, a hostess at a restaurant, and I got fired after two months. Why? And, um, <laughs> well, I, they wanted me to work on Christmas, and... And I was like, well, I, I have to go work at colleges. I was 17. And I went home to the DC area and came back and my name was off the roster. And I was like, I'm like, if you need me, let me know. And then I got name the rest, name the restaurant. Tell oh, us. Um, <laughs> it's Figaro um, on Vermont Ave in Hollywood. Thank you guys mm -hmm. very much. But the food's great. Um, <laughs> but the food's great. I, I, I you know, um, but it's okay. And then they have great coffee, great cronuts and then um i served a lot of people i i would you serve um ralph fines i, I served him coffee um mm -hmm. uh, who else um jennifer coolidge came in once i love her i was like ah! and then um <laughs> Corinne bailey ray once came in i was like ah! but i said you know i had to keep my cool uh no, it was like a cool, it's a cool little indie spot. So yes, for uh, sure. I, felt, I felt cool working there for two months. And then, um, and then I ended up being a, a, a nanny. I babysat my whole life. I love children. If I, you know, if acting didn't um, pursue the way it has, I'd probably be a teacher. I, mm -hmm. I love children so much. So good, good babysitting stories. Any nightmares? Yeah, I mean, most of, mo like most of the children I babysat, I, I just love dearly. Um, I, I love uh, the family that I babysat with before I went to college and started getting jobs. Um, they are so like, they felt like a family to me. And oh, it was that's great. Nice. So I, I can't really think of any babysitting horror stories. I can remember when I was a horror to my babysitters, <laughs> but I'm going to keep that for another day. <laughs> And before we go, since, you know, we all have been living in quarantine, what have you been binging? What have you been watching? Um, I just watched, um, I still need to finish Normal People on mm. Hulu. I heard it's like, I know, uh -huh. it's so, it's such a beautiful, beautiful show. I watched it, it with is. my boyfriend. Um, I watched Sex Education. I love British television. I think that the humor, I get the humor. It's like... Mm. And I did, I watched Self Made with Octavia Spencer. And yep. I thought it was such a fun take on like the first female millionaire in the United States. Like, so those are the last things I just binged. Yeah, that's, if you, if you have any suggestions for me, please let me know because I- We just binged May, uh, May I Destroy You. Oh, okay, I've heard that's good. Oof, it's heavy. It's heavy, but it's funny. It's like, it's, it's the, I keep talking about it. Because people say, is it a black comedy? Is it a dramedy? And I keep saying, like, it's it's neither. It's just this dr heavy drama, but with this comedy element to it that just, it just, it really, really works. It's I really, really that. good. Yeah. I'm going to put that on my list. There you go. I love well, Brittany, this was so great. This was so much fun. I'm glad we got to meet on my me phone. Too. <laughs> no, I hope to meet you in person and we and will one day. I know. And please wear a bow tie next time too, because this I'm loving this. Thank you. I always do. I have to people keep laughing at me because I even wear them in quarantine when I work. But I just I can't do work with it. I can't do it. But I love that. It's, Thank it's you. Like, it gives you like it keeps some sort of normalcy routine and purpose, you know? Yeah. You have some sort of purpose during this time. So I love it. I approve.
Not that you need my and approval. Now, <laughs> I like it. And now we just have to say goodbye to your mom. Oh, bye, mom. Bye, mom. It was good seeing you. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for having me. And have a good weekend. Have a great weekend. Bye.